What's up, guys? This is Sim with Vengeance, and I am back here with another Madden NFL 16 Miami Dolphins franchise. And today, the Miami Dolphins, the 1 0 Miami Dolphins, who came off with a really good win last week in overtime against the Redskins, are on the road once again. They cannot just wait to get on the road again. All right, I'm done singing. I'm a terrible singer. Yeah, bash me in the comment section, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, uh, we're taking on the Jags. The Jags are heading in the right direction as far as their franchise goes, I do believe. I think so, anyway. Uh, Blake Bortles obviously could be a really big-time quarterback in the future. I think he has the potential. Uh, I think he could be there in about a couple of years or so. Uh, just keep building around Blake Bortles. Uh, TJ Yeldon, obviously, I think he's going to be a great running back in this league. Uh <laughs> Most Alabama running backs are pretty good. Uh, look at Eddie Lacy, for example. He's really good. Um, so I really do like TJ Yeldon. Um, they need a, a couple more solid receivers, like not just like Alec Hearns or uh, Allen Robinson or whoever the hell they have. Justin Blackman. You know, they're all just either mediocre or really bad. Uh, but they do have Julius Thomas, which, I mean, he's a big time tight end. So obviously he's going to be a threat in the field today uh, we're gonna definitely keep our eyes out on him he might it doesn't it doesn't seem to matter how we defend him sometimes even like he'll probably just go off uh, last week our past defense would look pretty bad even though we only held RG3 to just 50% completion percentage but I mean he still threw for over 230 yards but Blake Bortles is I think a better quarterback than RG3 so it's gonna be a harder time defending uh, the pass this time around but we're gonna take a look at the injury report real quick and the Jaguars are missing a couple players, uh, Don, uh, Dante Fowler Jr. and Denard Robinson. Uh, Dante Fowler Jr. out for the entire year with a torn ACL and Denard Robinson out with, for a couple weeks with a broken thumb. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the little pregame. And uh, I'm going to see you guys in the game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's game, we have two tight ends who were both selected in the fourth round of the 2011 NFL Draft. It's Julius Thomas going up against Jordan Cameron. Now let's head down to Jim Nance and Bill Sims. Speak two back. Dolphins, Jaguars on EA Sports. A sweltering September day here as we get ready for today's matchup. Down on the sidelines, there's a look at the Dolphins' head coach. His team got off to a great start just a week ago, coming away with a win in their opening contest. And on the other side, it's the former Seattle defensive coordinator, head coach Gus Bradley. His guys are ready to try and make up for losing last week. Lee's going to be deep here for the opening kick. The Dolphins setting up here for the kickoff. And we're underway here in Everbank Field as Marquise Lee is going to take this one out of the end zone. Down to the 15 to the 20, down at the 22. And the Jaguars do have a pretty good start so far. Uh, here comes Blake Bortles, the former Central Florida quarterback who led the Central Florida Knights to an 11-1 record and lost to, I think they beat Baylor in that bowl game that they had I can't remember quite exactly but I do remember Blake Bortles having like the game of his life uh, but anyway Blake Bortles obviously a big time quarterback in college but he hasn't really he's still trying to prove himself here in the NFL I think he could do that but here on third and 19 here is Bortles steps back has time looks to the left side is caught by Julius Thomas he's gonna be a tough guy to stop today and Julius Thomas picks up 21 on that play and another first down for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Their first first down anyway. First and 10. Here is Bortles again dropping back. And he has time. Looks to the right side. And guess who it is? Julius Thomas. Down to the 35-30. Down to the 27-yard line after another good pickup right there. Of another, you know, 40 yards. But, you know, Blake Bortles is on point so far in the first drive. And so is Julius Thomas. He's getting open. We need to make stops. First and ten here for Jag for Jacksonville. Over the middle again here is uh, first down again. I think that's Alex Hearns, and that's yep, and that's another first down for the Jaguars. And now second and five here for the Jaguars. Single back formation. T.J. Yeldon right behind him, and here's Bortles again. Looks over the middle, 
And Julius Thomas once again getting his third reception of the drive, and that's a touchdown for the Jaguars. And they have an early 7-0 lead, and here comes Ryan Tannehill, who last week, eh, he could have had a better game. But this week, I feel like he's going to have a better game. <laughs> he's, you can't really – I mean, he didn't have a terrible game by any stretch of the imagination, but – Definitely could have had a better game. Those turnovers almost cost us a game last week, and we we can't really have that a whole lot this year. If we limit the turnovers, we could just win just about any game. So limit those, and we're good. So here's Blake Bortles. Steps back, throws it, but it's over the head of Allen Robinson, and that's going to fall out of bounds. And the Dolphins will get the ball back here, and it's now third and inches here. Lamar Miller right beside Tannehill, handing it off to Lamar Miller, and he does get the first down, so that's always a good sign. Uh, we really couldn't get the run game going as much as we did last week, as much as I'm so used to doing it in Madden 15. But look at Jarvis Landry. He's gone. Tie game. Look at him dive into the end zone for the touchdown. That's a beautiful pass, beautiful play design right there. And it's now tied at seven. But back to the run game. I haven't obviously ran the ball as much in Madden 16 like I did in Madden 15. Uh, I... I lived and died on the run game if I run game wasn't good um, usually my team suffered so um, at least I feel like with this franchise uh, if I if one suffers I can always back up the other because I'm not saying that my pass game was terrible in Madden 15 but it felt like in Madden 15 that you know passing was sort of limited not so much in this game not so much in Madden 16 I think but anyway we do get another first down right there from Jordan Cameron probably our best offensive player as far as overall goes uh, as far as you know performance wise I do think that Lamar Miller is up there as well even though he's doing a lot more than just running the football even a J man I like that a Jai he's been really good so far you know look at him getting this catch down the field for the end into the end zone for the touchdown he's been doing a lot more than just running the football look at him just catching that pass and I actually really like him that running back from Boise State you know He's a, he's a good player. I like what I've seen from him so far. So here comes Blake Bortles again down 14-7 to here to the Dolphins at home. He steps back once again, has time, and this one is caught again this time by Judson Blackman. And I didn't even know he was still in, in the league. To be honest, like, he, he's gotten in so much trouble. I don't even think he's deserving of being on an NFL team. But they have Jacobs in motion here, handing it off to TJ Yeldon. The former Alabama running back, and they're going to get the first down. So later on, it's third down and 10 here for the Jags. Jaguars have five wide receivers on the play. Here's Bortles. Steps up, and he fires it deep. And this guy has a cannon for an arm. And there is Marquise Lee, the former USC wideout. And he is gone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. 53 yards out. It's tied at 14. See, the Jacksonville Jaguars do have a lot of young receivers, but they don't have anybody who's completely polished. If they have one guy who is polished as a receiver not a tight end as a receiver you know they could learn from that guy and you know I, I guess Greg Jennings is like a perfect example of a good re young receiving core and then there's a vet one veteran leader that's gonna help him uh, grow as receivers so there, there again Greg Jennings perfect example um, you know that I think that that's what the Jaguars need in order to get over the hump but in an offensive line but that's just me um, but anyway off to Kenny Stills. Kenny Stills getting that first down. Tannehill, 8 of 11 for 155 and two scores. Looking really sharp today. Tannehill's looking really good. Like, what to, What did he have in that two-interception game? Huh? What? That, that's pretty much gone by now. But here's Tannehill. Just going to walk this one in. Touchdown, Miami Dolphins. 21-14 going into halftime. Dolphins looking really good here. So now start of the third quarter. We start with the ball once again. Tannehill, third down and one handoff. And it's a first down by Ajayi, and he gets the first down. So, second down and two, handoff Lamar Miller. Oh, my goodness, he is going to go to the house. 15, 10. Oh, he breaks a Oh, he breaks two, and he's gone. Touchdown, Miami Dolphins. And look at him put the hammer down on him. 28-14 on that big run. Oh, my Lord. So, first and 10 for the Jags as they just gave up a huge run. From by Lamar Miller. Man, oh man. Blake Bortles steps back, fires right side, and it is caught by Julius Thomas. What a catch down the sideline. First down, Jacksonville Jaguars. As you see, Julius Thomas already has over 100 yards receiving. Just killing it today. Straight killing it. But Bortles, again, underneath. 
caught. This time, Alex Hearns. He's going to take it down to the 40-yard line on the other side of the 50. And the Jaguars are in business. They are doing pretty dang good for themselves on the offensive side of the ball today. So I'm pretty proud of the Jaguars offense. They get a cookie. So off to TJ Yeldon. And TJ Yeldon gets the first down down to the 29-yard line. And the Jaguars are doing pretty good in the run game. Every time they pan it off the ball, they seem to get some decent amount of yards. But later on, it's Chad Henney in at quarterback. And Blake Bortles got a, a little stinger. He's going to sit on the sideline here for a couple of plays. And now it's Julius Thomas again getting that first down. Julius Thomas has just been all over the place today. We cannot stop this guy. He has been absolutely tearing it up. So third down and 10. Henney steps back looking for that screen pass, and he doesn't get it off. Uh, good defense by Miami and uh, we had a wall right there that was pretty much going to stop that screen pass from ever happening so here is uh, the field goal unit here for the Jacksonville Jaguars as they're going to try and make this an 11 point game and the kick is up and it is good so now 28-17 as we still have a decent lead uh, I, I wouldn't you know say it's like over over yet but we still have plenty of time left in this game but look at Greg Jennings go up and get it Big catch by Greg Jennings. 11 of 14 for Tannehill for 225 yards and two scores. This guy, Tannehill's been just doing Ryan Tannehill type things today. But you see Lamar Miller breaking a couple of more tackles. Somersaults into the end zone. Touchdown Miami Dolphins. That was a two-play drive. And now Lamar Miller has his second rushing touchdown of the game, making it 35-17. Fourth quarter now. Still 35-17. Here's uh, Chad Henney stepping back. Looking over the middle. It's Justin Blackman getting that first down. You see Chad Henney's 4-5 or five in the passing department. So, obviously, he's doing really good at uh, putting in the work for Blake Bortles. Uh, no, another catch by Julius Thomas getting that first down. Later on, Chad Henney's still in the game here on third and two. And they're going to try and get this first down to keep the drive alive. And here's T uh, not Tannehill, but here's Chad Henney. He used to play in Miami as well, the former Miami Dolphin quarterback. And he slides for that first down. At least he slides, unlike RG3. But anyway, Blake Bortles now back in the game here on a first and 10. 4.36 remaining in the game. Here's a handoff to uh, TJ Yeldon. And TJ Yeldon taking this left side. He has a chance to take it to the end zone, but he doesn't. And it's now a first and goal here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's now next play. I formation. TJ Yeldon taking the handoff. And he gets in the end zone for the touchdown. So now it is... 35-24. It's getting a little bit more interesting now. We're going to see here if we can put these guys away. So, here's Tannehill in the shotgun on a third and three handoff. Lamar Miller getting that first down. So, we do get to burn a little bit more time off the clock. Just about a minute and a few seconds later, here's Tannehill on a third and eight. Looking over the middle, but that one's almost intercepted. And that is going to be, uh, you know, a nice little possession there. We did kill a little bit of time, but obviously we would have, we would have liked to kill out a little bit more. But anyway, another catch here by Julius Thomas. And Julius Thomas breaking tackles. He's a madman today. He is a man possessed. And he gets a first down to the 42-yard line. And, man, this is, this just spells trouble right now for the Miami Dolphins. It's, you know, it's only an 11-point game. And the Dolphins, you know, yeah, they have the lead, but they could easily lose it. And the Jacksonville Jaguars still have all three of their timeouts with just a minute to go in the game. So here's Bortles. Steps back. Looks, end zone, touchdown, Allen Robinson. And now, it's now 35 to 30. Oh my goodness, that is it's, it's pretty bad right now. If they get the two point conversion, this could th make things really interesting. So, offset eye, and here is uh, Bortles, touchdown, or not the, not the touchdown, the two point conversion is good by Alex Hearns. And here's the onside kick with just under a minute to go. And the Dolphins do recover thanks to Kenny Stills' nice hands and quick feet and awareness. And the Dolphins are just going to try and run the clock out. But, uh, you know, Lamar Miller's been having a pretty good game. And this just solidifies it right here. Breaks a tackle down to the 20, 15, 10, 5, down to the 3 or the 2. So nine carries for 134 for Lamar Miller. Two scores. Obviously a big game so far for Lamar Miller. And now it's fourth and goal. And I, I'll explain why I went for it on fourth and goal. Uh, I, if I didn't get it, I'd rather have them go 95 yards to score. 
than to uh, you know get a six point lead and have them just all of a sudden take it away from me. So obviously there's a little bit of logic from what I did to get that touchdown. But anyway, we come out with the win today. Final score 42-32. The Dolphins move up to 2-0 on the year. And then next week we take on the Buffalo Bills in our first home game of the year. And I hope you guys are excited for that as much as I am playing our first home game of the season. We're 2-0. And obviously we're looking really good so far on offense. Defense, we could use a little bit of improvements. But hey, we're going to take them as they come. And... Hopefully next week against the, the Bills, our defense can improve a little bit. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're a first-time viewer of myself, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you drop a like to show your support for the series and all this crazy and amazing stuff. We just hit 5,000 subscribers today, guys. You guys are amazing. But until next time, my name is Sim with Vengeance, and I'm out. And thank you guys so much.